Well, good day. Welcome to our Thursday service. Uh, some of you might think, who is this? Um, if you don't know me, my name's Jeff Hearn, uh, the Bishop's Assistant, and uh, I'm leading us through our devotion today. And it's great to share this time with you. Uh, so our devotion is going to be on page 75 of our prayer books, Thursday evening. And as we gather together, uh, it's a great opportunity to, to reflect again upon part of the creed and to share together in prayer. So as we begin, we read this sentence from Revelation 19. The Lord our God, the Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and exult and give him the glory. In Psalm 100, a shout to the Lord in triumph all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his face with songs of joy. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Come into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his holy name. For the Lord is good. His loving mercy is forever. His faithfulness throughout all generations. Glory to God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, as in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. It's always great to rejoice as that psalm reminds us how good God is. That he's made us, we've come before him, we can come with thanksgiving and praise. But as we do the evening service, it's also an opportunity for us to come reflecting on our sinfulness and our need for forgiveness as we have the chance to pause for self-examination and then say the confession together. So if you turn with me to page uh, 44, the prayer books, you'll find there the words of the confession we've been using. And let's just take a moment to stop, to reflect, we reflect on God's goodness, we reflect on our lives. And, uh, and again, in the light of Easter, which was celebrated, Jesus' death on the cross and his resurrection, the forgiveness that is on offer for those who come to him. So let's pause and then I'll lead us in the prayer. So almighty God, our heavenly father, we have sinned against you in thought and word and deed and in what we have failed to do. Have mercy on us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you and live a new life to your glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we read again these words of assurance from 1 John chapter 2. If anyone sins, we have an advocate, the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the perfect offering for our sins, not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Well, as we Turn back to page uh, 76. Let me lead us in a prayer there. Holy Spirit, Lord of all life, comfort us and give us peace when we call to you. Turn the anxiety of sin into the joy of forgiveness and bring everyone to acknowledge Jesus Christ as Lord. Amen. Let me read you our psalm for today. Psalm 8. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory in the heavens. Through the praise of children and infants, you have established a stronghold against your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is mankind that you are mindful of them? human beings that you care for them. You have made them a little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honour. You made them rulers over the works of your hands. You put everything under their feet, all flocks and herds and the animals of the wild, the birds of the sky and the fish of the sea, all that swim the paths of the sea. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. And glory to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. 
Let me bring you a second reading uh, from Hebrews chapter 2, verses 14 to 18, as we reflect upon Jesus becoming man today. Since the children have flesh and blood, he too shared in their humanity, so that by his death he might break the power of him who holds the power of death, that is the devil, and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by their fear of death. For surely it is not angels he helps, but Abraham's descendants. For this reason he may, had to be made like them, fully human in every way, in order that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in service to God, and that he might make atonement for the sins of the people. Because he himself suffered when he was tempted, he was able to help those who are being tempted. And this is the word of the Lord. Well, I also want to read, us, uh, read to you um, the canticle for today, a, a great part of the Bible, Philippians chapter 2, verses 6 to 11, which continues along that theme about Jesus becoming man and all that he's done for us. Christ Jesus was in the form of God, but he did not cling to equality with God. He emptied himself, taking the form of a servant and was born in the likeness of men. And be found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name above every name. But at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And glory to God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. Well, as we've been looking through the Creed and we're about to look a little bit more, it's good of us to say it together. Uh, for those who want to follow in the prayer book, it's on page 117. Otherwise, it'll be on the screen. And so let's say this together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, all of it is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no ends. We believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Well, as we've been working our way through the creed, Today we come to that simple but important statement that Jesus became man. Uh, we know he's a man, but as he became man, it's a bigger picture. Yes, he was born a male, a man, but a real person, fully human, to be a representative for all humans. We've looked at how he's fully God and now he's fully human. As I read earlier from Hebrews chapter 2, the writer says that Jesus was fully human in every way. And of course, we, we see that as we read through the Gospels. We read of Jesus' life. He experiences the things that we experience. He became hungry. He was tired. He was sad. He wept. He was joyful. He faced the temptations that we face. And he suffered as we suffer in a fallen world. You see, Jesus knows our life because it's his life as well. 
And the great thing, as he becomes one with us, as he experiences what we experience, as the writer to Hebrews says, he can sympathise with us. He can relate to us. He can be merciful, for he knows what we go through. He knows our struggles. He knows our temptations. And so we can talk to him and he knows what we bring before him. But as well, in, as, well as knowing us, by being one of us, the great thing is he can step in for us before God. We know that he is God who has come to us, but being a man, being the perfect human, he can bring us to God. He became man to re represent what humanity was always designed to be, to live his life for God perfectly in every way. And because he did that, because he was the perfect man, he's the perfect intercessor. And the writer of the Hebrews says he's the great high priest, the one who can stand before God for us as one of us. The perfect human who can enter into God's presence on our behalf to bridge that gap between earth and heaven, between us and God. But the great thing is, as well as that, Jesus humbled himself to take on the form and nature of humanity, not just to represent humanity, but to enable us to come to God as well. In becoming man, he could pay the, pay the price for our sinfulness. He could offer his life as the one true and perfect sacrifice for sin. So he took on humanity to offer his perfect human life in place of our imperfect human lives to pay for our rebellion so that we could be forgiven, to enable us into, to enter into God's presence with him as we trust in him by faith. You see, his sharing in our flesh and blood and dying for our sins means that we can share in his heavenly life as his brothers and sisters in Christ. As he takes on humanity, he then able to take humanity with him into heaven as that perfect person, and we can join him by faith. Imperfect as we are, but with Christ, now able to enter into God's presence. This little statement has big implications for us. And there are a number of things that really hit me. Firstly, because Jesus was like us and lived in the world as one of us, he demonstrates what life should be like. He reveals the way we're to live as humans. That's to be faithful, to be obedient to God. His humanity is the model for me. What am I to be like? How am I to live? Well, I'm to be like Christ in all that I do and say. And secondly, his humanity gives me assurance that my sins are paid in full, that he is the perfect sacrifice. That he's taken it upon himself on the cross. That gives me great comfort and assurance. And that as he rises and ascends into heaven, he has taken humanity into heaven. So there is a place for me and a place for you, a place for all who would trust in him as Lord and Saviour. And finally, because he's experienced life, he knows what we go through. We know he was merciful and he is gracious. And he is there for us to come to, come to in prayer. And he will intercede for us before the Lord to give us that peace with God and to offer us that sure hope of heaven. Well, as we continue uh, in our prayer books, as we turn back now to our service, and I've just got to find it myself, on page uh, 77, we're going to continue in prayer. So, Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. And so let's join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. 
Let me lead us in fervour prayers. Heavenly Father, as we come before you today, we do thank you that you became one for us, one with us, to offer up your life as the perfect sacrifice for our sin, so that you will know what we go through and that you will take us into heaven as we trust in you. We thank you for your death and resurrection and the hope that we have for the assurance that you give us. And Lord, as we come, we also thank you for your ongoing daily provision for our daily needs. We thank you for the things that we can enjoy. We thank you for the things that you give us. And we thank you, Lord, for the people who provide them. In this time of lockdown, many people are still working to enable us to have those daily necessities. And Lord, we do continue to pray for your mercy to bring this COVID-19 pandemic to an end. Lord, we ask that you'll intervene. We pray for wisdom for governments in their management of the situation. We pray for safety for all those who are involved in health care. Lord, we thank you for their service and we pray that you'll enable them to be wise and safe in all that they're doing. But Lord, as we are isolated in many ways, we thank you that your gospel has never stopped. It's never changed. And we continue to pray for the spread of the gospel throughout this time, here in our community, through our words to people, for the things online, but Lord, throughout the world, for those who are still engaged in mission work in, in different ways, perhaps. Lord, continue to uphold them to preach your word, to find ways to share the gospel. Lord, as we gather and we see the difficulties that around us in our world, may it cause people to stop and to look to you, to put their faith and trust in you and not the things of this world that disappear. And we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me finish with the evening collect. Be present, merciful God, and protect us through the hours of this day. But we who are weary by the changes and chances of this fleeting world may rest on your eternal changelessness through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so let's conclude with these sentences, the bottom of page 77. The Lord be with you. Let us praise the Lord. Thanks be to God. And these great words of 2 Corinthians 13 that we all know so well, let's say that out loud together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.